Of course, yeah, you got the lunch, right? Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, we're ready to get started. Chris, close the doors. Today is uh, technology. So, yeah, we're going to talk about... So actually, today what we're going to do is go through all of the stuff on 21 Online where um, I'll go through and explain where things are. And then, so if you've got questions on something, we'll spend a little bit more time on some of the things. Uh, so there's a few of the tools we'll spend a little bit of time on, um, but uh, a lot of it's more just going to give you an overview so you at least know what's there. So cool. Okay, wins or successes? Anything exciting happening? Zach on the back row, anything? Making some money? A little bit, yeah. <laughs> okay, good. Good. Anybody have any wins? Uh, things are just coming together. First, oh, that door's locked. Chris locked. Chris locked you out. Sorry. <laughs> anyway, go For ahead. The sorry. First little while, it was just. I guess it wasn't what I expected. You know, get my license. So. Good. I like the way you said that too, because that is one of the things I think most people coming into the business have the experience of what you're talking about, not realizing that it takes some. You've got to get some momentum going to get to get it. Which, which um, with these three yesterday, that's kind of what I was speaking to when I was saying in terms of like, don't wait. The longer you wait to start prospecting and stuff, it's just you're delaying making the money. So. I think door knocking is the best thing. Yeah. Good. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. When you say door knocking, you know, the apartments, uh, houses, which one was there? Um, I've just done the house stuff. Yeah. But I wanted to get with the lenders and, like, flyers put together in a lot of door knocking apartments. Did you, have, did you do that, Steve, or was it Frank that went? Out door knocking. Uh, it wasn't I, you? I go door knocking. Yeah. Like on Saturdays. Yeah. Did, did, were you talking last week about doing that and you found a number of refinances yeah, and so on? Two possible Two potential buyers. So, yeah. It's a great idea. So. Well, you don't have to worry about it because <laughs> the lender would do it. So oh, <laughs> I see. See, I You don't want to worry about the refinance because you don't make any money off that. So. <laughs> Cool, good. Any other wins or successes? Good things happen. Steve? Well, this is kind of related but not related, but it fits. So yesterday, I had the opportunity to take my best friend, my lifelong friend, um, high school, to lunch for his birthday yesterday. Uh -huh. But I picked him up at his place of employment, and it's they, they design, they build, uh, stone projects for building facades. And one of the projects right now is in the city in Provo. And they have to build 1,300 of these facades. And, and these facades start with a, a blueprint, a plan, they build a frame, they build a mold, and then they just replicate this over and over and over again. And each one of those, you know, big pieces that I looked at were like 20 feet long and tall. And they have to be able to adjust the temperature change, um, you know, the weather. And all that work went into the mold. And they just replicate that process over and over and over. And it's, a, it's a money faucet. And I kind of liken it to this business. To learn the basics, to learn the principles, to create a money faucet, and create a new company. It was a very interesting process to see the whole, you walk into the whole job, yeah. but it, it likened to the real estate. Yeah, very good analogy of, of that. Once you get it get it in place, it's just replicating it over yeah. and over again. So, excellent. Yeah, thanks, Steve. Good. Who else? Pete, excited to see you here. I know. Cool. Okay. Well, any questions on anything before we um, let Steve come up and do his little uh, Jeopardy uh, game with you? Yeah. 
right? All right. So we didn't get a chance to really finish up last week, so we have more big money, 200 cents for whoever wins. 200 cents. <laughs> Only 200. So we already did income and credit. So for 200 cents, who would like the on payment economic demand for loan limits on that first row? <laughs> Pete. Now, did you used to be a loan officer? No. no you're not the Pete who did that. No. Yes, he does. Different Pete. No, okay. it's not. It's the same. <laughs> but don't worry. No, I was. No, <laughs> <laughs> so I, I thought you picked it. No, yeah. you picked. Top row, these two. Okay. Done last week. So I have to pick one of the other three. Yes. Okay. Uh, well, I'll pay them for two hundred cents. We need some music in this. <laughs> For FHA, right? yeah. FHA or USDA? Yeah. Okay. Oh. You're going to owe him two instances. Okay, please explain. <laughs> All right, so FHA is minimum down payment is 3.5%. For USDA, it is zero. Oh, All right. okay, so, so USDA, because I was going to rip this in half, and give it half. <laughs> well, USDA, you probably need 625 to get there, so I'm going to say 3.5%. <laughs> 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> there's no way I'm wrong. <laughs> you are. All right, explain. So there's going to be a variation of some stuff. FHA 3.5%. You are right. <laughs> Here, here's the other guy. Good job, Jim Taylor. Come see me in my office. Very good. Right. So, yeah, you are right. Okay. I think you just get rid of the federal flag. Please turn me in. Hey, it's not on video. Oh, wait, yes, it is. <laughs> turn me in. Free meals, room and board. I'm all for it. Is that a 500 dollar bill? It is. Question. No one will take it. Oh, I'll do it. You'll take it? Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, the problem is not $500, it's the day after the launch. That's the problem. That's why no one's going to do that. I don't want to do that. Good luck spinning that one. <laughs> Let's see. Okay, anyone else for uh, two hundred cents? Got two left. I've only used two minutes of my time. That's all you need. Is two. <laughs> Pete, no. no. Come on, someone else. Video. Okay, go ahead. I'll try. You can do it. Okay. 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 You gonna help him win? No. Why would you say that? Oh, okay. I do want him to win. I want him all. Chapter 13, if they made their payments on time for a year, uh, they can apply for a loan with FHA. What does that mean? So USDA doesn't really have an exclusion for uh, USDA. <laughs> he gets it right. He gets it too. It's because he's a loan officer. He's wrong. still a licensed loan officer. So, um, 
So USDA doesn't care, but the banks care. So they follow more of the FHA guidelines. So in theory, we could submit immediately if we got approval, but none of the banks would take the loan. So we're stuck with their overlay. That makes sense. All right. Okay. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks, Steve. So, um, and we got, oh, go ahead. Oh, it's a USDA. USDA is, I, you've heard of like USDA like me. It's uh, U.S. Department of Agriculture. Agri Agriculture. And they uh, sponsor loans in rural areas of the state. So, uh, it's a zero down loan. It has to be in a rural area. Uh, your income can't be too high, uh, but it's a great loan for first-time buyers. Does that yeah, help? Great way for somebody to get to zero down and buying a house, but it's going to be a little slow. In my opinion, it's the second best loan next to a VA loan, which we're going to start getting into. Well, there's more than, more than just those two as well. So. Cool. Okay, so uh, Joe's here from Vanguard. Any uh, title questions? Anything that uh, he can help you with in terms of title? All right. I'm well, just upstairs if you guys think of something, okay? Or you need a drink? Yeah, whatever. <laughs> okay, awesome. Well, good. So, any other questions about anything that's non technology related, since that's what we're doing for class? That you want to help with before we jump into that? Okay. Actually, you can use that. So. All right. You're all set. Thanks. I'll swap you. You're all magician as well. All right, so here's what we're going to do. Today. What I want to get into is just some of the technology pieces so that you guys understand. We're going to spend most of the time really just talking about 21 Online and everything that's on there. Um, there's a few of the things that, that we're going to spend a bit of time on. A lot of the stuff I'm just going to kind of give you more of an overview because if we were to go into much detail on everything that's on there, we'd be here like all day long. So, um, so anyway, um, how many of you have been on to 21 Online? Okay, so only two have not, right? So you have Zach? Okay, good. So um, any any specific tools, anything that, 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 what have you found that you like or that you don't know what it is or any of that? Do you have anything that way that you, like, have gotten on there that you're loving that you've found on there? Or you just been on there and looked? I like the flyers. Okay, cool. So flyers, good. Size of our assistance. Okay, good. Okay, so so there's actually a few different ways that you can go about doing flyers through here. So so we'll jump into that. This very top uh, thing. You, well, actually, let me back up from that. When you first log in, yours yours may not look exactly like mine does, and the reason for that is. You can drag these and move them around. Once your mouse looks like that, if I wanted this business builder to be over here, I could drag it and drop it right there. So you can reorganize these however you want to do them. I just have found, for me, the, the three tools that I use the most is one is the tool library, uh, business builder, and then lead router are the ones that I the three that I probably am using the most, and then CMA Toolkit would be kind of the next. So, so I actually just have organized these to have these in that particular order, which so I just want to make sure you guys are aware. You can drag those around and set them however you want, you want to set them. Okay? So typically, though, like I said, in this tool library has everything, really anything that you would need, which is why I've, I've thrown it in right here. So under this Ad Maker system, so if you click on Ad Maker here, there are a few of the different links. That, what they've tried to do in that uh, tool kit or toolbox thing there is to have it to where you can go in and, and find what you need in multiple different ways. Meaning, because 
you may not go in necessarily thinking in terms of this admin. Oh, come on. Don't. Figures that you thought technology day, but uh, technology <laughs> won't work. It's, technology's awesome until it doesn't work, right? Um, So once we get in here though to this ad maker, then you'll see also there's the brochure library right here. So a lot of these things kind of take you to the same general spot. Which actually I don't think you can actually get to the flyers now that I think about it from the ad maker. But but once you are within here, then you do have the brand center and this campaign center to where you can get into all of those different things. So, but since we're here on this ad maker, let me show you really quick what you can do with this. Because one of the things that's cool is they put out there um, the Century 21 commercials, basically, that, that you would see on TV are here. And you can actually go through and create a commercial that at the very end of the commercial, it puts your information on there. So you could create this ad this commercial basically using the Century 21 commercial but then at the end it looks like that commercial is advertising specifically you. Now don't read more into that than what's there meaning it's not like it's going to put tons of information about you but it's going to have your contact information. So let me just show you quickly on how you can do that. So to do that I would just come in here click create and then I'm going to down here decide what is it that I want to create a print, an online, a radio or a video. So so you can create any of that stuff, but I'm going to show you the video piece. So I say I want to create a video. So it brings up here the different choices you have, which is these national TV commercials. So if I just hit browse here, then it brings it up, and here's the different options that I have. So um, from here, I would just decide which one I want to do. So let's do let's do chase. Okay. So if I just click on preview here. It's going to build this out for me so that I can see what it would look like. And so it takes a few minutes because it's creating this to throw in my information on this commercial. And then once it is created and you, if you download it, then you can actually then use that to post on social media, things like that, so that uh, it looks like you've done this professional commercial for you. <clears throat> but it, I mean, it is also Century 21. But obviously. Come on. I know, right? It's just too ironic for us. I know, on the technology day. All right, well, we'll let that keep going. We'll come back. So within this uh, that ad system, think of it that way, as if you were wanting to create an ad, that's where you would go, it's the ad meter. Then this agent financial tools. These agent financial tools, as I said, I'm going to, we'll click on, on these and I'll kind of bring them up, but I'm not going to get into a ton of detail. But this one actually is a great tool to use for business planning. So if you're wanting to do some business planning, this agent financial tool, it gets going to maybe bring up to it for us here. A, uh, it gives you a simplified version of creating a business plan, but then it also has a detailed one. I think at least once a year, you should go through this detailed one that's on here, this agent financial calculator, to where you can go through and create basically how much your, what your budget is. So doing in, not just for real estate, but in terms of the planning for your life of saying, here's what my bills are on a monthly basis. Here's how much I'm spending on this, how much I'm spending on that. You can get all of that stuff input in there. Then once you've got that in there, then the system will help you to calculate based on that. Here's what you need to be doing in terms of your prospecting, how many people you should be talking to, how many appointments you're scheduling, those type of things. Does that make sense? And it's still not I probably should just create a PowerPoint out of this so that when this happens, I can just show you that one. We may not spend any time on anything. Let me just explain to you what everything does. All right. 
I'm going to skip to the very last tool in here because I know this is going to be a lot of So I'm going to show you this, this zap, easy zap. This is a system that actually we are going to be rolling out on July 12th. So, so plan in your calendar right now for July 12th. And we're going to have two different uh, sessions that we offer for uh, the training on this system. So this system is, is a, um, think of it as a contact manager. Essentially, some of the stuff I'm going to show you today, I'm going to show you multiple dis different systems today that we use right now. But on July 12th, this new ZAP system is going to be released, which is going to combine a bunch of these things into just one system, which it basically is going to give you a website and a CRM as well. So I want to give you just an overview of what that looks like. So provided the video. When you say it's going to give you a website, are you talking about just the 21 online, or is it like you create your own website? It's going to, you'll have your own website that uh, people can go in and search properties and, and all that. So it, it, this, this video here I'm going to show you, hopefully, will give you that. The company will be getting sound, and it's suite of tools that will help you run your real estate business and drive results. This video is primarily focused on consumer tools. Our goal is to give you a preview of the amazing tools that you can offer your customers to help them find or sell a home. Then when your company goes live on Zap, you'll get like additional what? training on how to use the tools that are available to you as agents. There are two important trends we see in industries today. First, is the concept of a hybrid service. And that's where consumers use a combination of technology and people to purchase goods and services. When it comes to home buying, today's home shoppers want to be able to search on a mobile app or a website and then work with a sales agent to close the transaction. As you'll see later, Zappos consumer tools really help you deliver this hybrid service beautifully. Today's consumers also want personalization. They want to be able to select specific search criteria that matches their needs. I will demonstrate how Zap can help you meet the consumer's needs for both the hybrid service as well as personalization. We're going to learn about Zap through a story. In the story, you will meet Rosie, a sales agent, Scott, Rosie's old school friend who reconnects with her through Facebook, and Chad a buyer who finds Rosie while searching online and lands on her Zap-provided website. The story begins as we see Rosie and Scott catch up over coffee. Scott tells Rosie that he's looking to buy a home. He's been looking online already, but mostly on Zillow and Trulia, and he's just not finding what he's looking for. Let's see how Rosie uses Zap to help solve Scott's problem. Rosie tells Scott about her personal Zap website and invites him to use her mobile site. She tells him that Zap displays accurate, up-to-date listings because it is then directly by the MLS. And similar to the broker site, the agent site is updated as often as your MLS allows, which could be between 2 and 12 times per day, and sometimes more. And the site has the ability to push notifications of new listings out to customers as soon as they hit the MLS. Rosie lets Scott know that he can access the site from any device, including his tablet, smartphone, and his laptop, and that all of his Zap-based preferences and activities will be synced and saved across all devices. Rosie wants to get Scott started right away, so she creates an account for Scott using her CRM. While sitting next to Rosie, Scott immediately receives an email with login instructions. He logs into his account and searches for homes on the map. He immediately finds a property he likes and he saves it. He also sees Rosie's name, photo, and an easy way to contact her. He taps the request to showing button and Rosie's mobile device dings with a notification telling her that she has a showing request from Scott. Scott loves this tool and says he will hop online after dinner to find more homes. They part ways. Let's fast forward four hours. After dinner, Scott hops online on his laptop to look for more properties. He logs into his account and does a search using the smart search bar. He 
enters the city A, then the site suggests multiple options, including city, neighborhood, school, and more. The smart search bar also allows Scott to enter a zip code, address, or MLS. Scott gets hundreds of results from his search and needs to trim his list. He clicks on more search options and sees many ways to customize his search criteria. In his smaller list of properties, he notices a few homes that he likes that were not on the Zillow and Trulia sites he used before getting signed up on Rosie's site. Scott wants to see mapped out locations of the homes, so he clicks on Map View, where he can also see schools, transit, sold homes, map boundaries, and local information such as restaurants. Scott is also amazed as the map highlights homes in green and blue that he saved and viewed earlier while on the mobile site. Rosie told him that all of his preferences would sync on all devices, and boy was she right. Next, Scott notices that he can draw on the map, so he zooms in and uses the tool to narrow down to a specific neighborhood that he loves. For now, he's satisfied with all of his customization, so he clicks to save the search and leaves the box checked to get email updates of new listings. As Scott glances at the list, he sees another home in the same neighborhood and clicks on it. The website allows him to look at street view and bird's eye view, which confirms why he loves the look and feel of this neighborhood. Similar to what he saw earlier on the mobile web, Scott sees Rosie's contact information throughout the website. He also notices Rosie's recently shown and sold properties on the website. Rosie's visibility and even push notifications of new listings will make it easy for Scott to connect with her at any time on any device. Now Scott saves the home, but he wants to see all of the homes he's saved so far. So he clicks on your account. Then he clicks on saved homes. Because his activities are synced across devices, he can see the home he had saved from the mobile site earlier. Scott also sees a few with a note from his agent Rosie highlighting cool characteristics of each home. Under your account, he can also see his saved search along with all of the homes he's viewed. Chad just moved to the area six months ago and he's ready to buy a home. When Chad Googles homes for sale in the city, he sees the brokerage name at the top of the list. He clicks and lands on the broker homepage. Chad immediately sees how easy it is to search and quickly find a home that he likes. When he clicks on the home to see the home's details, he also sees Rosie promoted right next to the home. Rosie is featured here because it's her listing, and on your brokerage website, you will always be promoted next to your listing. Chad has a few questions about the property, so he clicks on Request More Information. He enters his questions, along with his name and email address. Now he's curious to learn more about Rosie's real estate experience, so he clicks on her name. Now Chad has landed on Rosie's agent website. He learns more about her outstanding qualifications and local knowledge by reviewing the following information. Personal statement. Rosie wrote her own statement that shares her personality, her real estate skills, and the services she provides, as well as her local knowledge. My listings. Rosie's listings are highlighted in a carousel format with links to full home details pages. Video. Rosie has posted a video where she talks about who she is and the type of service she offers. Experience, credentials, and community involvement. Here, Rosie lists her experience, credentials, and memberships, along with various community groups that she volunteers in. Agent insights. Agents can tour or show properties and post insights on the home details pages for each of those properties. Chad can see the three most recent insights Rosie has posted. And lastly, social media links. 
Rosie provide links to her social media profiles so that prospective customers can learn more about her. After reading all of this, Chad feels confident that Rosie is a qualified real estate professional and looks forward to working with her. Now, let's look at how Rosie can see what Scott and Chad have been doing on her website and mobile web. When Rosie logs into Zap, she sees Scott and Chad along with their Zap scores. Let's look at what Rosie sees when she hovers over their Zap scores. Scott has been very busy. He has logged into the mobile app this week. He saved two homes, requested a home showing, saved a home search, and is receiving new listing alerts. Now, let's take a peek at Chad. Chad also has been busy. He's viewed one home, viewed her agent website, read a rating and review, and asked a question about one home. Rosie really values having a lead scoring system and insight into her customers' activities because it really helps her to know who to contact at the right time with exactly the right kind of service. She finds that this helps her work more efficiently and really has enabled her to connect much more easily with prospective customers. Rosie will continue to follow up with both Scott and Chad to encourage their usage of her website, mobile app, and mobile site. She knows that this is the only way she can see their activities along with the Zap score. This invaluable customer insight helps her provide quick and personalized service. Well, that does it for your Zap overview. All right, any questions on that? Russ, they mentioned in that video they have access to properties that aren't on Zillow. What is the process for which properties get put on the Zillow and why would you have more access to the last year? I think why it's saying more than what you would get on Zillow is because Zillow is a little delayed in what in getting the feeds, so they don't uh, update as often. Is more I think what they're meaning by that is, and I, I don't, I don't know how much you guys have done with Zillow. Have you done much on there? Yeah, I mean I looked at Zillow. And, but, and have you called Not as a direct on? Direct comparison. But have you then called on properties off of there? I know. Okay, because typically what what the consumers find is they get frustrated pretty quickly. Zillow likes to, because of how low our inventory is right now, they're not anxious to remove properties off of their website because it, they don't want it to look like they don't have very many. So a lot of times the good properties on there by the time the consumer calls is they, oh, that's sold or it's no longer for sale or whatever. And so uh, that's part of where, the, that's a little jab more at Zillow is when they're saying that. Okay. For the, the, the agents who, seasoned agents, totally, that's, when they're saying that in that video, that's totally relating to them in terms of, oh yeah, I hate so, so, okay. anyway, so yeah, great question. What else? Cool stuff? I mean, that that's that's where, and I'll, I'm going to get some more into some of that here in a second, but it looks like our commercials build out, so let me show you that. <laughs> Before you got on the plane, I had to tell you. Hey, Jason, you need to do this too. You got the house. I have the house. I love this guy. Oh, okay. Okay. It's smart. So you'll notice there, see, then it's thrown in my contact information. So, like I say, it's not like it's this fantastic, like it's totally highlighting you. But it does at least throw your information in there so that at least when somebody's at the end of the commercial, it's showing from you. So, yeah. And then, yeah, from there, you could then share those on Facebook. You could do those type of things. So, all right. So can I ask a real quick question uh -huh. about the ZAP training? You said there are going to be two times during uh, the day on the 12th. Do you know what times those are going to be? So the first one is going to go from 9 to 11. Yeah, great question. Thank you for asking. So from not, plan from 9 to 11, which you don't need to attend both, just one of them. 
but and in fact, um, you'll want to sign up. I don't know if we've even created the sign up sheets yet. That's probably going to happen this next week. But um, you'll want to sign up for which session because we're going to be doing these over the Salt Lake board. So there, there's limited capacity once once it fills up, it fills up. But so we've got the two sessions, one from 9 to 11, which they'll want you to show up at 8.30, making sure that you have all your login information for 21 online. And then um, the second one, so from 9, they want you there at 8.30 to get logged in, make sure everything's working. And then the class will go from 9 to 11, and then the second one will go from 11.30 until 1.30. So those are your two different choices on those classes. So. Will that be put online? Yeah. So that, that's these are people from Century 21 flying in to do the training, so they will be the only ones doing those trainings. But yeah, so if you can't make it, it'll be something that we'll be able to help you with. Um, they're already currently when you go on to which looks like that's tool so it's not working. But if you come on here and, and go down to either the Easy Zap right here, or if you scroll all the way to the bottom, same thing, Zap right here and just click on that, it will bring up this page here that I was on. It'll bring up, there, there already are tons of training videos and things on there you can get into, but we will continue to train on that. Sure. So we will mail these out until the 12th of July. Yeah, you can go ahead and look at videos and things right now, but it well, it actually, I think, will be turned on on the 11th, actually, is when it will be available. Click on the easy zap and take you to the login page. But um, until then, it's just got the training videos and things. So, so when you have an account, I'll say like Chris Parker. So actually, you'll have actually what how it works is you're really a subdomain for it. So it's more like a, a page on there is probably a way to think of it. So probably what you would want to do. Well, in fact, this is a good segment. Let me show you. What I have done is, is you can go out and purchase a domain and then you just forward it. So like for instance, right now, um, you have available this My C21 site, which I'll show you here in a second. But I've gone out and bought RussOrchard.com. So if I just go to RussOrchard.com and then hit enter, you'll see here that what's gonna happen is it's now gonna not do anything. <laughs> Same as what we've had, but yeah, it should forward now. And then what, if you keep an eye up here, what will happen is it'll change to, it'll show Russell Orchard, russell.orchard slash century21.com or something like that. I can't remember exactly what it is, but it's really easy. Yeah, if you just, if you don't so have like on your cards, you just russellorchard.com. Yeah, and so to buy that domain, serious? But, well, you can see here, it's got to see russellorchard.c21.com. It's really, that's the really the site. But I went and purchased russellorchard.com and then I forwarded it to here. So um, to do that costs like 12 bucks a year. I mean, it's very cheap. So it's for the whole year to get that going. I may not be showing you guys anything. All right, well, we'll keep trying to trying to go down through the fact while we're doing that, I'm going to try to get it to the other people. All right, So a great question. I, I believe that is what will happen is, is when you're setting up your account. So I, I've already somewhat gone through the process on this because I had to go through it to get the, as a video is showing is we're going to have our company website. So the company website, I had to go through and get that set up. And so um, when you first log in the very first time, it's going to ask you what you want that subdomain to be. And so you'll be able to put in what, what you want it to be. So, but yes, it should just do that same thing. And then Uh, great question. Actually, so it's a Realogy product. So let me even explain that real quick. 
So who owns Century 21 is Realogy. So up at the very top of the chain or whatever is Realogy. Realogy also owns Coldwell Banker, ERA, Sotheby's, Better Homes and Gardens. So Realogy has ownership of all of those things. So it is potentially possible for some of them that they'll eventually have these tools. Um, with the exception of in our market, Coldwell Banker will not. Is, is what they have told us. They have they use a different system, and uh, so they are not going to have access to this in our local area here. So um, ERA, um, there is an office. But. So it, it's in a in a roundabout way, yeah, it's pretty exclusive only because there's really those other competitors. Sotheby's very small, Better Homes and Gardens very small, and um, ERA too. And I'm not going to show you guys anything. So keep asking me questions so that we can accomplish something. <laughs> well, I have a question. Okay, go um, We can set, you know, Facebook gives you the option to set up pages for business. Um, and I've seen other agents do a, a Facebook page for their real estate. Where do we go to find, you know, logos and things? Like if I wanted to set up a Facebook page, I want to have my picture here with the background. I want to have a Century 21 logo. Where do we go to find that type of information? Perfect. Right here on 21 Online. Oh, the one that's working Sorry, so Ryan. well. Sorry, <laughs> Ryan. Did, did you need me? Okay. Um, yeah, right here on, on here. And okay. it is, um, yeah, I can't remember if it falls under the Brown Center. I think it is. Actually. Yeah, I've looked at a few of those and I couldn't, I, I don't remember which items I've looked at and I couldn't find it. So. Well, I would love to show you, <laughs> but I'm not sure I'm going to be able to. So but as long as I know that I can find it, I can keep looking in those things. But my, because my computer doesn't work any better than it's actually <laughs> on a daily basis, so yeah. I definitely feel your pain. Okay. So, yeah, so I, here's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to kind of go through each of these so that we at least will know. And okay. since it's obviously not hard, I kept thinking maybe it'll start to work, but. So yeah, Brand Center is where you can get that. So you can get in to grab the logos. You can download different sizes of logos and all those type of things as well. Um, the other thing, is, since you bring up the Facebook piece, there are some other things on here that as we scroll down through here, well, in fact, I'll just right here. You've got the C21 Social Media Exchange and, and the Learning Hub and the Social Exchange. So on here, let me scroll that up so you can see a little bit better. But um, one of the tools that we provide to you is this uh, social media exchange, uh, Hootsuite. Any, you guys familiar with Hootsuite? Okay, so those who are not familiar, Ho Hootsuite is basically a way for you to manage all of your social media in one spot. So what you do is you can connect your Twitter, um, Instagram, Facebook, Hootsuite, H-O-O-T-S-U-I-T-E, Hootsuite. And we provide it to you for free. If you were just to go to Hootsuite and sign up for it, I think it's like 15 bucks a month. I don't know. Is it, any of you guys know? Yeah. And so with this one, though, um, we provide that to you where you, so what you can do, and I would love to show you, that was one of the things I was going to show you, but is in Hootsuite, you can get all of those accounts attached to there. And then you can go in and create all of your social media posts that you want and then say when you want them to actually post. So the idea of that is, rather than spending a whole bunch of time on it, maybe on a Monday you sit down and plan out, here's my plan for the whole, whole week in terms of any social media things that I'm gonna post, and you create it right then, set it for when you want it to go, and then you forget about it and it does it automatically for you. And where do you get to that? So you're just gonna click on, so there's two things. Well, if you wanna learn about how to use it, you click on the social media learning hub, and then they've got some videos that will help you and show you how to get it set up. But then the actual social exchange right here is when you click on that, will take you into there. And then, um, like I say, that's where you can schedule those. You can get things set up. What I have done with it and that I was going to show you today is I've gone in there and then I have, and I think it by default attaches the Century 21 Twitter feed and the Facebook. Is that showing on there? Oh, no. I'm, oh, I'm okay. Taking it now, so oh, okay. I like it kind of faster. Okay, perfect. No, you're fine. So um, anyway, it has it on there. So what I would do is just go and find some of those, and then I was just resharing those things and setting for when I wanted it to go out. So meaning, 
you can just go create a whole bunch of these and then you just say I want it to post however many times per day. So you can either set an exact when you want it to hit or you can say just post all, take all of these things that you've gone through and created and post these and do two every day or you can say five every day. However many you want it to do each day and then there's an option on there for it to say post at the optimum time. And what I don't know is how it decides what that optimum time is, so if one of you guys does know. But essentially, I think what it's doing is looking at like when you have the most friends online looking, and then it'll post it. So it kind of keeps track of, of that, is my assumption. That's the only way I can think what the optimum time would be. So anyway, that's that social media. So in terms of your Facebook and stuff, you can manage all of those things from right there. All right. Next, so the Brand Studio, like I said, Brand Center, Brand Studio, really, I haven't been able to figure out really much of the difference. It kind of creates a lot of the same things. And then the brochure library is where you would go in. Let's see if this, oh, it's still not working. So it almost looks like maybe it's something on there. On 21 online, it's a problem. But anyway, so the brochure library is where you could go in and you can create brochures. The other place, though, that I would recommend, I, and again, I'm not saying that one is better than the other. I just, for me, I felt like it's a little simpler, is Business Builder. So Business Builder is uh, the CRM that you can use to keep track of all of your SOI. You can keep track of your contacts, all of those things, which I'm a little, like, iffy on saying a whole lot about it. It's going to be there for a while, but quite honestly, once Zap is released on July 12th, Really, that's where I'm going to recommend that you go and put everybody is into the Zap system. So, but Business Builder is out there and available right now. The one thing with Business Builder that I do really like right now that I was hoping to be able to show you is um, you can actually create flyers and things right out of Business Builder as well. Now, the nice thing with Business Builder is we've got to go through and actually attach your office or the, all of the offices to that account. And once we have done that, then it's a matter of creating the flyer as you go choose the template you want. You plug in either the MLS number or the address of the property, and then it pulls it up because it's got the whole MLS there. It pulls up the information, you select it, and then it auto-populates that flyer. So it makes creating a flyer just like that. So you're going to be able to do the email campaigns things like Yep. That's the other thing you can do in the, in the business builder is you can do email campaigns and things, but Zap will give you that as well. So the difference between business builder and Zap, in my opinion, what makes Zap a lot better is that Zap score that it has. So it, the system itself, as you're sending stuff out to people, the system is going to rank those people based on what they're doing with what you send out to them. Meaning, are they opening the email and looking at it? Are they clicking on links within it? And the more active they are doing that and going to your site and searching properties, then it's going to give them a score. And, and as that score gets up, I think it showed a 91 or something there. When you start to see the score getting up into that range, that's your cue of I need to stop, follow, follow up with these people a little bit more. So that's the nice thing is ideally what you brought up earlier, Chris, you want to try to drive all of your SOI, any leads, all of that to go to your site to do any searches that they're doing because then the system's going to keep track of them for you to let you know, hey, this person has become very active and they're ready to go. You should contact them. Does that make sense? So, okay. So uh, underneath the brochure library is business benefits. So one of the things you can do with this, if you go click on it, is it'll bring up all the benefits and things that you can get. So some of the examples of that. One of the things I love to bring up to you because it applies to everyone in here is if you have not done so yet, when you go in there and look at it, most of your cell phone providers, because you are affiliated with Century 21, is going to give you a discount. So any of the big name companies, so the Verizon, AT&T, um, Sprint, T uh, I think even T-Mobile, I'm not 100% sure on T-Mobile, but, but they will give you a discount on your phone bill. So make sure that you go in stop in at one of the stores and let them know hey i'm associated with century 21. depending on the company they may want either a business card or some of them even you just tell them and they just do it for you so so but one of the things you want to do is stop in and do that it's typically somewhere between 12 and 25 percent depending on the, the company that they give you a discount now that discount's not on any data or anything it's just your cell phone bill so it's the smaller portion typically of what they're charging you, but 
hey, you need discounts worth it. So some of the other things that you can get through in there is, is um, for like renting cars, things like that. It gives you codes that you can use on there. So, so discounts to, is a great thing to make sure to check on with that. One of the other things that if you haven't started seeing it yet that you will is um, they you'll get emails of uh, I can't remember the word now. basically like a certificate to give you discounts on places to stay for like vacations and things. It's like two hundred dollars, two oh nine I think it is. You pay and it'll give you a whole week at a resort typically that you can stay at. And now with that, you've got to go in and look and there's off seasons and all that kind of stuff that play into it. But there's calendars you can go in and then schedule um, reserve those. I'm curious, uh, do these offer any discounts for price? There are some of those things in there as well, yes. Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. So that's in the business benefits. Business Builder, we talked a little bit. Again, that's the CRM. Um, we've got a whole separate class that we do on that. Although, what, when did I say that class was? It's after Zap, right? So really, the next time that class is taught, I'll actually just teach Zap instead of Business Builder. But, so I guess that would be one of the times for me that if you miss it. And I, that was like a couple weeks after it. Wasn't it? Was yesterday. So anyway, that's business builder. So I, like I said, I don't want to spend a ton of time on it because that's going to go in. But let me take that back. It's not going away. I shouldn't even say that. Eventually, it will transition out. But you'll want to start using that. So business cards, stationery, postcards. That's where obviously you can go in and get business cards, stationery, postcards. We talked about the social media. Can I just uh -huh. mention a comment there? Absolutely. I think everybody has gotten the idea that there are cheaper places online to do business cards. Um, this stuff print comes to mind, you know, everybody's, oh, Vista Print's the cheapest. I just ordered my business cards through here and out of curiosity went to Vista and their cheapest option was more expensive oh, really? than here. So. Oh, good to know. This two or three different companies yeah. as well. Yeah, I did. I don't remember which one I went through, but, hmm. but going through here was What's cheaper than cheaper? going through That's Vista, which which I was impressed with. Yeah, that's great. So. I'm glad to hear that because because I have just heard the opposite all the time too. So, so good. I'm glad to hear that. Good. My daughter said, "Why did you do that? Why didn't you go to Vista?" I said, "I, I didn't have the logos and things, and this has got it all set up." Yeah. She goes, "Oh, Vista would have done it." And I went in and yeah, it was, would have been more money though. Huh. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. Good. That's good to know. I found that same thing. Did you? Okay. Good. That's good to know. All right, C21 University. On here is more training classes. So there are classes and things on there that available to you that you can go in and learn uh, just more about. They'll have different presentation things and, and stuff on there. Quite honestly, I think how we teach a lot of the presentation stuff here is way better, in my opinion, than, than what you'll get there. But there's some, still some good things on there, some great videos that you can go find. Um, some of the sales trainers and things, you can find different things on there under the C21 University and the registration site. So typically I've found it works best just to go to the registration site. Now, while we're on that though, one of the things that I would recommend that you guys do, especially if I can't get it to work still, I was hoping to go through and spend a bit of time on the lead router. So let me see if we can get it to open and try that again while we're talking. But if not, what you'll want to do is go into C21 University registration site scroll down and find where it says lead router and you're going to click on that one you may have to do two clicks to get to it but you'll see the, the lead router name on there that you click on a couple times it will bring up a training video that you go through the training video and then it has you take a little quiz at the end and then it'll mark you as trained why that's important is lead router is the system we use to route leads so when you have a listing and somebody goes on to century21.com or even realtor.com or Trulia or Zillow and they're searching and they come across your listing and they then request information on that property, what's going to happen is that the information then comes into the lead router system. The lead router system then processes that and finds out that, hey, that's your listing. So let's say it was Tristan's listing. Within about two minutes of when they have submitted that lead, your phone's going to start to ring. Tristan's phone will start to ring. She answers it, and it's saying, I've got a lead for you on this particular property. Here's their name. Here's their information. And, and from within the lead router system, while it's on the phone, it'll even say, press 5 to connect with the customer now. 
press five and it'll call them and right while you're sitting there listening. So within a two, three minutes of them actually hitting enter, there you could actually be on the phone with them, which is in some ways maybe a little uh, creepy to some people, but the flip side of that, if they've requested information, it shouldn't be creepy at all, right? Because they wanted the information. How impressive is that? Because how many of you have gone onto a website and requested information and you've never heard back from the person? I mean, I think everybody's had that experience, right? Versus this, within the two or three minutes, you could actually hit five and you're on the phone with them. So, make sense? So the lead router system, Obviously, 21 online is having some issues. But anyway, so that lead router system, that one for sure, I was actually going to try to go through and just do the training with you guys on that today, but we'll get done early and we can do it another time, I guess. Chris. So the Century 21 paying Zillow to go lead router? No, nope, we're not paying them. It's just their, well, yeah, let me take that back. Yes, we have. So that, that way the information is then routing straight to us. It's coming into us through there. Yeah. And I don't know any of the details on that. But, uh, but so those sites, when somebody's out there searching, then it'll come up. Now, let me, there, there's two pieces to the lead router thing. So let me make sure you understand the difference on them. So, so the first thing is for what we've been talking about. So for your own listings, on your own listings, to get your own leads, you have to be marked as trained in the system. The way to get marked as trained in the system is to go on and watch those videos. Then you're going to take that little quiz, which quite honestly, I mean, the quiz at the end, without even watching the video, you could probably go in and pass this. I mean, it's multiple choice, but it's like some of the options they give you for the answers are so like out there that you're like, really? I mean, it's this. But how you'll know is that you've been marked as trained is you will come, come in here and you'll click on this access lead router. So let me try it again and see if we can get there. But it'll bring you up, it'll bring up the system. When you log in, they'll have a box right there. It, and it'll have writing inside the box. It'll say that you haven't been marked as trained in the system. So right now, if you have not gone in and watched the video, Right now, it's going to show red and say you haven't been trained. So once you've watched the video, though, then it should turn that to green, saying, okay, you're eligible. So why that's important, until you do that, if you've got a listing right now and a lead were to come in on it, if you're not trained in the system, it goes to somebody else. So somebody else ends up with your lead on your listing. So you want to make sure you're going to get trained on the system so that it will then route those leads to you. That makes sense? So the second piece of this, what happens is, let's say somebody is on our Century 21 site and, and we've got the whole MLS on there. So they're searching and they come across a listing from an agent that is at a brokerage that's up the street. On that particular property, if they request information, obviously we don't want to take that lead and send it to them, right? I mean, it's, they're on our website. We want to capture that lead. So the other option that we have available that you can get involved with is for you to then get some of those those leads as well. So now I don't want to like get your hopes up to like, oh, I'm gonna go do this piece and that's gonna give me hundreds of leads. No. You'll probably get one or two, maybe three, four in a month. You know, they, it's gonna come through this way. But what happens is if somebody's on there searching the MLS, they come across a property that is a non-Century 21 listing or if it was on, let's say, Jean's listing right now and she hasn't been marked as trained, we then take that lead, or lead router takes that lead and says, who wants leads in this zip code that this property's in for this property type and in this price range? And then it looks at a list. So let's say that all you guys were on that list, it's gonna go, okay, well, Mike's next up to receive the lead, so let's call him. Now, it's gonna call if he picks up the phone, it's going to say, we've got a lead. Do you want to accept it? If he pushes one, he gets the lead. If he doesn't want to accept it and he pushes nine, then it'll move on then to Jean and call her. Now, here's the difference. On your own particular listing, so if it's your listing, when that system calls, one of the things that we know is with an Internet consumer, you got to respond. The first person to get a hold of them is most likely to get the lead. 
So you want to get a hold of them as quickly as you can. Now, MIT did a study with um, Inside Sales that's down in the Provo area. MIT and Inside Sales did a study on these internet leads to figure out, like, they went as deep into, like, what day and what time is the best to respond to a lead. And But here's what they found, is if you can get a hold of them within the first five minutes that they put that information into the, you know, requested. So if they're on our website and they request information on a listing, if you can get a hold of them within five minutes, you got a pretty dang good chance of capturing that person as a client. Every five minutes that goes by after that, though, it is like a steep drop-off, meaning the longer it takes you to get a hold of them, what this study that MIT did found is after about a half an hour, you're a hundred times less likely to, to capture that person as a lead as if you had done it in the first five minutes. So now because of that, we have the system set up. So if, if it was Gene's listing that they were looking at and they go in and say, oh, I want to go see this property. I'm going to request a showing. They request the showing. What happens is we say because it's Gene's listing, we want her to get that lead. So what happens is that lead router will then call her. So again, you'll have that phone ring within a couple of minutes. If she doesn't pick up, then what the system will do is leave a voice message saying, Gene, you've got a lead. You've got 20 minutes to respond to this lead or we're going to take and give it to somebody else. Because again, what we know is the longer that time goes by, the less likely that you capture the lead or we as a company do. So what happens is if she calls back, which you just call back the same number that called you, it'll recognize your phone number if you're calling from the one that it's called you on. It'll recognize your phone number and it'll give you the chance to claim that lead in that 20 minutes. If that 20 minutes has gone by, it's that lead's moved on and it's going to somebody else. Now, there's one other thing that you can do. Did you have a question? Okay, let me explain one other thing. The other thing you can do within the lead router system is you can actually set it up to send you a text message as well. So it will send you a text message saying, here's a lead, do you want to accept it? You just reply yes to that text and bam, you got the lead, okay? So the main thing I want you to hear out of this is don't hear that, oh crap, if I don't respond within 20 minutes, somebody else gets my lead. That, that is true. But what I won't want you to hear most out of this is the faster you can respond, the better off it's going to be to capturing that lead. Okay. So when that comes in, respond as quick as you can. We're, and we make it to where even if you're in an appointment, you could hit yes on a text and bam, you got it. And then call them as soon as it's done. Okay. Make sense? Go ahead. No, that was kind of my question. Right, like me, I do most of that kind of searching in the middle of the night, and so you know, you might not want to call me at two in the morning. Yeah, but, which that and that is, you actually bring up a very good point that that I actually have been trying to work on and been trying to work on this for a number of years. So it's not like I'm making much progress, but but the the way that the lead router system works is it it can do it from like seven in the morning until ten o'clock at night, which. So if you are on at 2 o'clock in the morning, we aren't even going to get the lead until 7 o'clock the next day. I've actually been trying to, to, for five years on this with the lead router system. So even prior to being here, when I was at a competitor, saying, this system needs to route those leads 24-7. Because, again, if you're on there at 2.30 in the morning and Chris happens to be awake and lead router calls him, I mean, I, if the person just requested the information, hit 5 and call them back right then. Because... How blown away would you be then if you were requesting information at 2.30 in the morning? Now, does it now, give you the, their phone number and you dial the call or does it auto put you through to them? It's going to call them. So it'll, it, if you hit 5, it'll, it is calling them back. So it doesn't automatically put you through. It, the system is going to call them. Is there, is, is there a way where you can take their information and shoot them an email? Like, yes. Hey, I noticed. Yes. I know it's a little late. I don't want to wake your kids up. Uh -huh. Yep. Yep. Yeah. It'll, when it calls you, it'll get, or texts you, it'll give you all that information. Or you can just log into the system to do some options. Yep. Great question. It gives you the chance to accept the uh, the lead, but not first you accept You don't it. have to call them no. back inside. No. It just says first you accept it, you hit one, then it says to be connected to the lead, press five. No. And so if you push five, it'll connect. But if you don't, then yeah, it's just it, all the stuff's in your your account. As soon as you hit one, it's all in your account. I just want to send an email to, to, to your point. I guess the rub. 
Well, and, and for me, here's... Everybody in the family well, like at this point, you can't because the system doesn't even notify you until 7. Uh, I'm seeing the work now. I want to get that changed, but I haven't, as I said, I've been trying to make headway on that, but I haven't been able to yet. So, um, here's the awesome thing, Jason. Nothing is working on here, so... <laughs> Yeah, when I, any of the links, I think it's 21 online. Everything I click on, it gives me an error. So we're just talking about uh, the different things. So anyway, so okay, so that's the main piece. Now let me go back though to the second. So so in the event you don't pick up the lead within that 20 minute period, it's now going to move on to what we would call the E team. On the E team, how it works is you can get those leads. Now there is a caveat to this though that you will want to consider. Because I know so a lot of you may be sitting right now thinking, oh, I want those leads. That would be awesome. Yes, but you do pay for them as well. So how that works is, and you only pay if it closes. But if you decide to accept one of those leads, so let's say that Dalton accepts one of those leads. It came in on Chris's listing or a, let's say a, a Cobalt Banker listing. And obviously if it's on a... Keller Williams, any of those other companies, we're going to send that lead to one of our agents. So Dalton accepts it, says, yes, I'll take that lead. He goes and then finds a house for them, puts it under contract and closes on it. Then you do pay a 35% referral fee to the company for that lead. And the purpose behind that is generating the website and paying for lead router. This is back to where Chris was asking about, will other companies have Zap as well? Every Realogy company has access to Lead Router, but it's expensive, and so most of them do not use it. So there, that is one of those tools that how we pay for it is through that referral fee. So if you decide you want to be, in, and there's no requirement, you don't have to do it, but if you want to, that is how we pay for it is through this 35% referral fee. So when you say 35%, 35% of what? The commission? The gross commission. So if it was a $200,000 home and it was a 3% commission, there's $6,000. 35% comes off the top of that, then whatever is left over then gets split between you and whatever your split is. That's how it works. Make sense? So, Let's if you pay 35%, then the brokerage fees and all that stuff. Then your normal split and everything, yeah? That 35% is just to pay for basically the system and all this. So, that it's, it doesn't change your split. Now, I've been told that internet leads. Um, uh, we can do a little bit right now. Here's how I'll sum it up for you pretty quickly. Here's how I think best to think about internet leads: is you got to approach them in in a, in a uh, parallel tracks kind of a thing, like two different ways. Meaning, if if you are a hunter, which I don't, any of you guys hunters, okay, good. Well, if you're a hunter, what are you going out to do on the day you go out hunting? Kill. Yeah, you're going out for the kill, right? And you're going out for the kill today, not like next week or next month or whatever, right? So approach internet leads like you're a hunter going out for the kill, meaning you got to be fast on it and you want to be aggressive right off the bat. But if I'm a farmer, how do I approach my getting my food? As a farmer, what would you do? Yeah, as a farmer, it's like I got to go out and plow the field first, then I got to plant the seed, then I got to water it, then I got to pull the weeds, right? But that's how we've got to. So treat internet leads initially like you're a hunter. You're out for the kill. But the moment that you get in touch with them and they tell you, oh, no, we're just curious, we're just looking, you immediately kick into farmer mode. Oh, that's great. I work with my clients at their pace. So tell me what it is that you're thinking. So you kind of approach it going out for the kill, meaning, and what most of that when I say go for the kill is just being fast on it, but then immediately kick into this farmer mode of, hey, no worries, you know, I, I, you know, in your mind, I got to plant the crops, I got to weed them, I got to water, I got to do all those things. If you'll approach those internet leads that way, so I don't know if that's what you mean when you say you've heard they're different. Yeah. I, ultimately, think of it as you're fishing upstream. Probably the best way I could explain it to you guys is, which may or may not make sense to you, but when I first started in real estate 20 years ago, obviously we nobody was on the internet doing really any searches or anything. In fact, 20 years ago when I started, we had barely gotten the MLS online. It was all a DOS based, which I don't know if that means anything to some of you guys, but but like you would call in from your the 
the phone line at the office and you could hear the you know the connecting of it and it, it was that slow so but why I bring that up is at that time what was happening is that if people were just getting started in the process as they were checking out at the grocery store they would see these bins that had all these homes magazines in it and they would pull out a magazine and start looking through it we'll see that the only difference in today's market than that one was back then we had no I, no way of knowing who was taking a magazine and looking at it. Although I did actually have an agent that I had trained that she went and stuck her card in every one of the magazines at the office or at the grocery store, which I thought was kind of funny. But anyway, um, so people would be doing that. So the meaning on the internet, these internet leads, it's like we're fishing upstream. Just think of it that way as you're upstream capturing people that back in when I first started, they would look at those homes magazines and the first chance you had to capture a lead was when they called to ask a question off of one of those houses. See, we used to get tons and tons of phone calls to the office back then. We don't get many phone calls to the office now. Instead, what we did is people go online, they hit request information. So just think of it that way as these are just people that are upstream. You've got to be a lot more patient with them in how you're going to work them in terms of that. So versus you look at a for sale by owner and expired, what do we know? Yeah, I mean, if for sale by owner, we know they want to sell, they got it. And it expired, we know they at least wanted to. They may not want to right now, but but a lot of times they we know they're going to be doing it again. So those are more immediate versus you're going to think of these as more of long term. Now, with that being said, I tracked internet leads for a number of years. And what I found is every year we would have, we and we were closing generally around 200 to 250 leads every year of internet leads that we would have a handful of leads that would every year close within 20 days meaning from the day they hit enter on the, the internet they closed on the property 20 days later every, I don't know why that was the magic number but we had a lot that were 20 days every, I should say a lot there were a handful every year that were 20 days but then the other extreme we had them every year that were eight or 900 days from when they requested the information. What I found is the average, so if, and I averaged that out every year, the average was about 150 days. So how many months is that? Five? So the average internet lead is gonna close four to five months after they come in is what I have found in tracking. So keeping in mind though, you're gonna have a handful every that are 20 days from when it comes into it closes. But you're also going to have some that are three years later. Half of all the leads that get closed will close within six months. So that's what I found. So anyway, is that enough on lead router? Any other questions on it? I shouldn't have said is that enough, didn't I? I don't want to ask any questions. I'm trying to think if there's anything I didn't tell you. Oh, yes, on lead router. So it, on the E-Team, if you end up on the E-Team, how it works, is we can put zip codes in there so that the system will just immediately start contacting you and remember I said on your own listing it will leave a message if it's not so if Mike's on the e-team it's gonna call if you don't pick up we're not leaving you a message because we gotta get somebody to call this person it remember it may have already been 20 minutes now we don't have time to waste so it's gonna go to Gene if you don't pick up it's going to Trish and afterwards it's going to Dalton if he doesn't pick up it's just gonna keep calling eventually if nobody's available none of you are available then it'll kick to me saying, I don't know what to do because I can't find anything. So from that, I then will just find somebody that I assign it to and give them that lead. Um, something else I was going to say. Oh, yes. So on that, where the system is automatically calling them. Remember how I said when you first log in, you're going to have a box there that's either green, yellow, or red? Where that really becomes crucial is, so if let's say Mike is next on the list it, it, to receive the lead. But the system says if he's not already following up on his leads, I'm not going to give him any more leads. So that when you log in, you see that green, yellow, or red. If it's green or yellow, the system will continue to give you leads. If it's red, what that's what you have told Lead Router is I'm not following up with my leads. So Lead Router says, well, then why would we give you any more leads, right? So you want to make sure that you're always in the green or the yellow. So how, what's the difference? When a lead comes in, we give you, or lead router gives you, 24 hours to go in and update it. So as soon as a lead comes in and you accept it, 
Remember when I said you log in, it's green, yellow, or red, it immediately is, is going to turn yellow, meaning you've got at least one lead, one lead that is yellow. So that color scheme that it gives you, the green, yellow, or red, is telling you what your, I don't know, for lack of a better word, worst lead that you've followed up with is. So if it's yellow, if you log in and it's yellow, that means you've got at least one lead that is yellow. Okay. Now, so it, it'll immediately turn yellow as soon as you accept the lead, meaning you've got 24 hours to go in and update your leads. As long as you go in and do that update, then it'll turn it back to green. But if you, after 24 hours, have not gone in and done the update, it's going to now turn red. Once it's red, the system says, you're not following up with your leads, we're not giving you any new leads. So, so it's important to make sure that you stay in the green, really. Now, once it's red, as soon as you go in and update the leads and get them all updated, the ones that are red, it'll turn back to green and you can now get leads. Yeah. So the goal being to that and Yeah, into lead router. Now, you can sync Business Builder and Lead Router together so that you're keeping all your leads really just in Business Builder. And as you update it there, it'll sync it to let Lead Router know. But. Will we be able to do the same thing once it's at? Uh, my assumption is yes. I haven't heard the answer to that, but I can't imagine that they would not. It would be dumb not to do that. So I actually have a phone call tomorrow that I'm on where I'm going to go through all of the lead round pieces of that with Zach. So I will ask that question tomorrow. So, uh, let's see. So the, the update schedule on the leads is from when you first accept it, you have to do an update within 24 hours. The next update has to happen within a week. So you have to do a second update on that lead within seven days. So on day six, it'll turn yellow again. And then if you go and update it, great. If you don't, it'll turn red. But then once you update it after the one week, then it's every 30 days. So it's a 24 hour, again within seven days, and then every 30 days that you've got that lead, which actually goes back somewhat to where Chris was asking. Here's what I've learned. And, and again, I have studied internet leads pretty good for the last five, six years. Most agents give up on leads way too quickly. Meaning, they'll get the lead, they'll try to contact them, so they'll send them an email. The person doesn't respond to their email, and they say, this lead's no good. Most agents will totally give up on a lead within the first week. Which, if you stop and think for a minute, I already told you, on average, those leads are gonna take five months. If you were a consumer, so put yourself in that spot for a minute. You're a consumer that's going to buy a house. What's the first thing you would do? Yeah, and that obvious. That's all of us would pretty much do that, right? You're going to jump on the internet. You're going to do search for properties. If you saw one that intrigued you, but let's say that you're just early in the process, you're not sure you're actually going to do anything, but you're just a little curious on something, and you sent me or you know you clicked on for the property hey does this property have a swimming pool and i wrote back and said yes or no or whatever what are you going to do after that when i then send you an email saying hey do you, do you have any properties you want to go look at are you going to reply to my email or not reply? if that's the only interaction well, well, no. my first instinct would be who are you and why well, meaning no. So let me back. So you said, does it have a pool? I replied back and said, no, it doesn't have a pool, but uh, would love to show you some other properties to do. When would be a good time? Oh, okay. So you, okay. So I was thinking that if, if yeah, all no, you no, said no. was yes or yeah. no, and then later. Yeah, sorry. I is what I said, but that's not what I meant. So thank you. But what would you do if you're not really ready to do anything? Are you going to even reply to me? Some might, but most don't. Now, Here's the thing that I want you to keep waiting until they're ready. That's right. Most are going to do nothing until they're ready. So you can set up through Lead Router and through Business Builder, either way, these drip campaigns. My recommendation is do not, and especially if you do decide to go on the E team and get some leads, do not give up on a lead for at least nine months. So assign a drip campaign to it, something that has the system keeps emailing them at least at a minimum once a month. Because if they, it's amazing how many times a lead will, once they're ready, like all, said, all of a sudden they'll reach out to you. Hey, you've been sending me this stuff and I'm ready to go. But if you're not doing it, they'll go find somebody else. Okay? So the last thing that I recommend you guys do, and, and especially like for Zach, you're, you, you get a lot of internet leads, don't you? 
and through your team. And are you on a team, Riley? Okay. So are you Chris? Who's? Josh Jones. Okay. So any of those, here's one of the things that I found works the very best. When you're in, but same for anybody, any internet lead, before you give up on it, send them one last email that says this. In the subject line of the email, quick question. And then inside the body of the email, are you still looking to buy a home in X, whatever city it was that they were, have been looking in? That's it. Don't, you're going to be tempted to put more than that. Don't just subject line, quick question for you. The body of the email, are you still wanting to buy a house in Sandy? You will be amazed how people who don't ever respond, if you send them that email, they'll, they'll reply back and either say yes or no. And you'll get that kind of a response. Nope or yes. Now, I've even seen it where they'll say yes, they are still looking, and then I send them another email and they don't respond to me. But that's okay. If they say yes, what that tells me is don't get rid of them yet. Keep still trying to get a hold of them, okay? Anyway, I found that that is like the best email before you give up on somebody. Is, are you, and you don't have to do it only when you're going to give up. If you're not hearing from somebody after a few weeks or a month, maybe throw that as an email. Hey, just wondering, you know, are you still, don't, don't even say just wondering, are you still looking to buy a home in Sandy or Holiday or whatever it is? And see if you get a response. If you don't get a response from that, then I usually say, all right, they're probably not going. All right, did I beat that one <laughs> enough? All right, let's keep going through here. We still got more stuff to get through. Uh, let's see, where were we? Sent, we see two one viewers. So campaign center, again, you can set up campaigns there. My recommendation is I'd rather do it in here or once we have Zap doing it in the Zap system. The commercial site, um, don't worry about it, I'm going to skip through it. Uh, this event website actually, I think it's a newer thing. I've not seen that. I have to look at those. I don't know what those are. Uh, there's some continuing education. My experience with that is typically, don't worry about that. You're going to get enough continuing education by coming to classes and stuff here. So I probably wouldn't worry a ton about that. Create 21 registration. Link. Speaking of continuing education, we need to sign the roll. Oh, thank you. Yes. <laughs> now that's excellent. Thank you for reminding me. Uh, let's see. I'm going to blank on what create 21. What is it? Some of this stuff, like this crest edge, I would say don't really worry about the crest edge. That one's not a big deal. Directories, again, you'll probably never use this. Uh, the do not call sentry, this is a spot you can go in and check the do not call list. So if you had phone numbers that you wanted to go in and see, hey, are they on the do not call list or not, you can click on that, pull it up, and then type in phone numbers or upload a list to see if they're in there or not. Uh, document center is a spot you could go store documents, but again, there's a document manager. That, I'd say just use .loop instead, but you do have that option if you wanted to use that. Uh, easy Zap, we already talked about the Zap system. Uh, golden Achievers and Golden Ruler. Golden Achievers is more just a, 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 where you can get awards to find out who the top companies and agents and things are. So we use that as a company a lot to make sure that we're still the number one office. But um, Golden Ruler, this one's a great tool for you to use. The Golden Ruler um, is for when you've got a listing it is going to keep track of how many hits you're getting on that listing on the different websites. So using Golden Ruler is what you would want to do is you can go in and set up for it to weekly send a report out to your seller letting them know how many people have looked at their properties online. Now, we have over 800 sites that these things go out to, but it doesn't track all 800 sites. It's basically keeping track of how many people are going online and looking at your property on the, the top sites. So the Trulia, Zillow, those type of things is where it's really keeping track of. Now, the other thing you could do that's similar to the Golden Ruler is on the MLS, you can get the reports of how many people have looked on there as well. Here's what I'll tell you. On the MLS, you're gonna have this huge number. I mean, it's gonna say thousands of people have looked at it, which is true, but 
it'll show up on the MLS as somebody looked at it. If if you go in and do a search for properties just messing around and you bring up 200 properties and you don't look at any of them, it still would show up as, hey, somebody pulled up your property, which technically you did, but you didn't really look at it. So the number you're going to see on Golden Ruler is going to be a smaller number than what you would see on the MLS, but it's also going to be a more accurate in terms of these people actually looked at your property versus on the MLS. When you look at the one on the MLS, you can, if it gives you multiple options. If you look at the ones that show you like full view, then it'll tell you how many people really got in and looked at the properties, on there, the photos on there. And that will be a smaller number as well. I just tell you that because I think sometimes agents want to throw that one to the, to the client thinking, look, we had 5,000 people look at your property since we listed it. Well, that's not totally true because, again, it may come up in a search, a CMA, messing around. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, let's raise the price. So anyway, Golden Ruler, though, you can set that up to just automatically email out to them once a week, which I would highly recommend that you do. So that that way they're getting that email of, hey, here's how many people looked at your property online from there. Uh, home protection plan is the uh, American Home Shield. We, we had Josh actually here. Really, I would say as far as that goes, calling Josh is going to be better than clicking on this for anything. Uh, international referral system. Really, you won't ever want to use that. Just go through our relocation department. This here is just for all Century 21. And not every Century 21 is affiliated with Cardis like what we are. And so you just want to run it through Cardis rather than this. Uh, lead Rider we talked about. Listings with photo report. Again, it's just you can get a photo report on your listings. Here's your logo, um, library of things. So award, corporate, and doing business as. Uh, this is the Century 21 Real Estate Mobile app. You can have your clients use that as well. But again, I probably wouldn't. Once we have Zap out there, you want to say you want to get them involved in in the Zap using your site, the mobile site through Zap is what I would recommend over this one. And then uh, prior to again Zap being released, which again, so I don't, you can do this, but I don't know if I'd spend a ton of time on it because you're going to really want to use your Zap site. But right now we have you do a My C21 site. That My C21 site. To set it up, you're just going to click on it here. It's then going to ask for this, the domain you want to put in. So you'll just put in your first and last name. So like on mine, you saw that it was Russell Orchard. Well, if um, if there's already a Zach Bellows out there, which I don't know that there is or isn't with Century 21, if there was, and you put it in, it's not going to let you have it because somebody's already got it. But, uh, so you would have to just try a different combination or something to come up with that. So. On this My C21 site, though, very user friendly is you just click on it. You're get once you come up with that subdomain, putting in your name there, it's just it steps you through. Essentially, once you put in that subdomain and hit save and continue, your site is then built. So it's there as a basic site. You don't have to do anything else. But if you want to customize it, you can just keep doing save and continue, change whatever you want, save and continue, change whatever you want save and continue, and then when you get to the very end, you're going to hit publish. This is one of the other things I was going to show you, but apparently not. So anyway, that my C21 site. Now again, once once on July 12th, once we have Zap out and running, my recommendation is going to be probably to just use the Zap one instead of this one, but you can decide. Uh, my listings would show you your listings if you have anything. Um, this growth platform would be more of the numbers thing that you can do. Um, I don't even know what this, I've kind of looked at this before, but I don't really know. PR Studio is going to be back to that ad creator thing again, similar to what we brought up before. And then there's a preferred client club. So with this, this actually is a pretty cool tool that you could do. Um, this preferred client thing, you can go and set up, I think it costs $25. So once your client closes on a house, you could go in and pay the $25 to put them in this preferred client club. They're going to then get emails, and then I think it even sends out to them, I can't remember if it's two or three times a year, an actual magazine that it looks like basically you have sent them this magazine, similar to the commercial. I mean, it's not like the magazine's all you, but like maybe the back page or whatever. But So um, that's something you can sign them up for that's just going to continue to send information to them. And like I said, they'll get a magazine a few times a year as well. Is it $25 a year or just 
Uh, great, yeah, great question. It's for that year. And then if you want to decide them up again the next year, you know. per client. Per client. Uh, so, and if you want to look more at it, this this info page will give you more. Um, this is more about just the awards thing. This real satisfied, real satisfied. After you close on a deal with a client, what's going to happen is real satisfied is going to send them basically to do a survey or a comment, a review on you, and then whatever they type back and send to you, it'll come to you, and you can then decide, hey, I want to share that on Facebook. And so you share it on Facebook, and it, it basically is a an endorsement by your client to how great you are which when i have done that and sent it out i'm amazed at how many people end up liking that on facebook or making a comment about it oh, that's cool or whatever but it's a great way to reinforce to your soi that you're friends with on facebook about your that you're doing deals and that people are happy with what you're doing for them so i think so that's a good 21 thing. online automatically and almost close on the deal yep. you have to do it? nope it's going to do it automatically you don't have to do anything. The system itself, once you close, it's going to, this uh, real satisfied is a company that's out there that Century 21 is just work partnered with. They're going to send out this survey for the person to fill out on you and then reply back to the, the comments. And then it'll go to, uh, I don't think it goes to your MyC21 site. No, I don't think it'll do that. It just comes to you as an email. Hey, this person has responded and here's what they said. And then you can click on it and go into the real satisfied and say, hey, I want to share this on my Facebook page and then you connect it to your Facebook page. So, and you have to go in there to set that up or is that already set up? There? It's all already it's set up. Already okay. yep. It's all already going to happen. You'll have to set up to connect it to your Facebook. Right. right. Well, but I wouldn't worry about that until you get your first. You'll get the email saying they've done a review on you and then from there you can go in and set it up. Yep. Yep. Oh, so yeah, on Zap it may. Yeah, on Zap it may. I don't. Right now, the way it's set up, it does not automatically. With Zap, that's another great question. We'll have to find out. So, uh, let's see. This REI wise for commercial is again a commercial thing. I wouldn't worry about it. State by state foreclosure laws. So if you want to look about foreclosure laws for our state, you could do that. Um, you can also create unique property sites. So when you get a listing, you can create it. You need to have its own site, which again, you could go to GoDaddy, purchase a domain for whatever the address of the property was if you wanted, and then forward it to this unique property site. So you could tell your client, I've created a website just for your house or if you want. Is that some all the people? I don't think many do. There may be a few, but. To me, I think you're better off just going like to the MLS and sharing the property on Facebook and stuff. You're going to get more things taken that way, and then maybe do boosting it or something on Facebook to where it goes to other people. Uh, the vanity email on this vanity email. So if you want to forward your Century Twenty One email, so all of you has a your first name dot last name at Century Twenty One or at C Two One dot com. If you want to forward that to a Gmail. This is where you would do it. Just go into the vanity email, click on that, it'll load, and then from there go to options, and then forward, and put in your forwarding address, and then all your emails will forward them. When they set mine up, they did that for me. The office did. I oh, really? Do, yeah. Wow. And, and I guess you'd be all in Centerville. Centerville. Yeah. yeah. In Centerville, they go for me. In Centerville, they go for me. That's awesome. It was in the email. That's awesome. Yeah, the one that I sent it to you guys yesterday. Um, Express Docs is some place you can go and order um, postcards and things if you want. So that's a paid thing that you would do. But uh, Business Builder is also tied with Express Docs, so you can create the flyers and things there and then have them send out through Express Docs and then the last one is it. So, last thing I want to talk about, or zip, not, not zip, zap. Last thing I want to go over with you is the CMA Toolkit. So, the CMA Toolkit is something that's fairly new that we have. So Essentially, the CMA Toolkit, um, if you click on this, there are demos and samples that you can do. Here's what I would recommend for you guys to do. So um, for Dalton and Tristan, who are still somewhat new, you don't have even MLS access yet, right? Wait until you get MLS access to do this, but the rest of you guys that have MLS access, get a little familiar with the MLS first, but once you are, and when I say a little, I just mean a little, so that you kind of know how to get to reports and things. but after you've done that, come into this demo and samples, or actually, let me back up, the schedule a walkthrough. I would highly recommend, once you're a little familiar with the MLS, 
click on this to schedule a walkthrough. It's free. The CMA Toolkit company will just, you'll pick three different times that you would be available. And then from there, one of those times, they will reply back and say, this is the time we'll call you at. So they'll call you on whatever number and then that date and time, and they'll do a walkthrough with you of this CMA Toolkit. The CMA Toolkit, think of it as being a, um, a listing presentation package. So that's where you could go, and, and believe me, let me just see. There is so, there, there's way more information than you would ever want to use in this CMA toolkit. A lot of times people want to have this nice packet of information to take out to their client. If, oh, we may have even lost 21 online now. Um, maybe that's a good thing. But this, this is like, it'll create like a whole book. I mean, it's, there's that much stuff on there, which you would never want to use all of that much stuff on a presentation. But, um, but if you're wanting something that looks really fancy and those type of things, whoa, we're getting the whole code even. Can you find where it's in there else to click on it? I know, exactly. <laughs> Figure it out. Right Probably right in here, isn't so it? For those that wanted to know DOS. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but remember when I was talking about MS-DOS? This is it. So um, anyway, within that, though, it, it'll you can create your CMA basically out of the MLS, the properties you're going to use, and then you can upload them into that, and they, it'll put them together in reports and have pictures and all those things, and it, it looks really nice. Yeah, what I'll tell you, though, is if you do a great presentation, we remember we talked about this last week, those are weird. If you do a great presentation, you don't need all of this stuff, but it's still not a bad idea to have some of it and to be familiar with it and to use from that as you talk to the clients based on what they ask to be able to say, oh, here's you know how we take care of that for you. So, All right. I thought it was interesting as I was driving in this morning, I passed a billboard on the freeway. Uh -huh. Uh, from an agent with Remax, free market analysis. Yeah. And I thought, how much money is he spending for that billboard? Yeah. And I, I thought, that's just, to me, it was overkill. But I would agree with you. That's just <laughs> yeah, no, I agree with you. Well, it's my work. From what I know, this is just what I know. I go to business school, they told me it's like, yeah, although it's to me, it's still going to need to generate. I mean, even if it's eight hundred bucks a month, you know, depending on your price range and stuff, it's still going to need to generate a deal every few months, or else it's not worth it. Right. All right. So here we are now. So it seems like things are working now that we're done with class. But uh, <laughs> this is the CMA toolkit. So where to where you can again, you can have them do that walkthrough with you. They'll come through and show you. Let me see if I can get a full presentation. You can also do property flyers here. <laughs> Every system you can do property flyers. So here's all your different options for presentations. There's a listing presentation, pre-listing, and a CMA only. So the listing presentation is the pre-listing and CMA together. So you can either do both of them just on the listing presentation, or you could do just a pre-listing or just CMA. Does that make sense? Then there's also expired presentations for sale by owners, buyers, um, buyer property tour, find homes and estates, all of that stuff. So this is one that I've just got saved in here. Let me see if we can pull it up here. Uh, let's see. Ooh, last place. Uh, let's see. So it's going to build it out here. So at this at least you can kind of see what this presentation looks like. Here it is. So I just, this is my house. I threw in a picture of my house here as I was doing it. But so you, you can see it'll throw in a picture of the, the property itself. Then from there, it's got your information, 
And there, I mean, like I said, there's tons of information. You can edit this information. So I, I just threw in a fake address and stuff here. But you could go through as you're creating this presentation and edit the purpose of the presentation, working to you. I mean, you can see. Here's all the information that, I mean, it's more than you could ever want to use. And you bore somebody to death if you tried to go through a but, so don't do it. But we get down in here to home staging, keeping you informed, the golden ruler, here's our global stuff, selling your home. This first little bit's just all about Century 21. Where I like this chart with the with the seller, where do buyers come from to sh show the breakdown. Okay, so this kind of comes in how we practice the pre qualifying getting the information we need to yep. build the yep. so now you can just pretty much take exactly what you Basically, need yep. to okay. perfect right. you got came together. Yep, yep. that's Go exact ahead. that would be the purpose of that pre qualifying is now that I know that if they were concerned about some of this stuff I'd want to use it. If they're not I don't worry about it. Right. This home search process, so again what we were talking about before, eighty eight percent of all home buyers start on the internet first. Eighty seven percent are gonna use an agent throughout the process. Fifty percent are doing, you know, all of this stuff. So that's and this is right from the NAR report. So what do they value? I mean you can see there's so I mean we're only about halfway through here. But then we get into the market overview. So now the rest of this is gonna be just all about their property. So again it's gonna bring up the the picture of their house there, information about it, then the summary of the properties that you pulled in from the MLS, a map of where those properties are, information about the properties, comparables currently on the market. One other thing I want to show you on here that I really like is, and this one I only brought in um, currently on the market properties, but if I had brought in under contracts currently for sale and sold, what it would do is I really like this chart because typically what will happen is here it's showing you the price range of the properties that are currently on the market for that area. Down here it would show the ones that are under contract, which typically they're going to, that chart is going to look something like that. And then down here it has the sold and it'll move over like this into the price range. So you can kind of then with a seller be able to say to them, do you want to be on the market under contract or sold? Obviously, they want to be sold, right? Well, then we need to price it in the price range of where the solds are. If we, you could even throw in expireds, and typically then their range is up here. So, you know, if you want to price it where you're pricing it, that's typically where the expireds go, or pricing it down here under the solds is where you'll end up being a sold. I know that's a lot of questions. So no, I'm you're good. How? So, you're saying it's going to do that for like sold and on the market? Do you just type in an address to find the CMA, or how does that work? To oh, great question. So that's where I was saying, before you have schedule a walkthrough with the company, get familiar with the MLS, that's why. What you're going to do is go on the MLS first, find the properties that you want to use as the comparable properties. So I only pulled in. You're going to export them out of the MLS and import it into here. And that's what they'll show you on the walkthrough is how to do that. But um, all I imported here was five that are currently on the market. Had I pulled in the solds and other contracts, in. Okay. and we're getting that information on the MLS. If you're okay. first going to go to the MLS to get all that, that makes sense. Yep. Okay. And then it's just going to take it and put it into a nice, pretty report for you. So anyway, that's the CMA toolkit. So like that's where I was saying, you know, really, once you get a little bit familiar with the MLS, call and have them do a walkthrough with you. Um, so that you can go through and get to know some of that. All right, what other questions? Any other technology things? I hate teaching these classes, by the way, especially when the technology is not working. But you used um, the video issues. I saw that it comes with a membership. Uh -huh. uh, but I had problems with Android. You now that's a really specific question. Well, that's not a surprise. I'm just <laughs> I, I don't I know that I couldn't even use it. Oh really? So I, and I don't know the that. details of it. That I don't know that much about it. I've used it before, but mostly just to get to know it, to know it a little. So I don't know what the deal. I would say call video wishes, I guess, okay. and ask them on the Android piece of it. How can I get my from the Century Twenty One? I know you showed it was in your office, but let's see if it'll work. Thank you. 
impact the central fluid. And I may have to play with it. That's one that I I don't do it enough that I can remember off the top of my head. Well, you may have to set your phone up. Yeah. So it depends on what domain you're using. There's, there's apps for most of the domains, and so you can just set your phone up to receive that email. Yeah, probably what we'll have to do is just sit down and go grab your phone and go through and get it set up. So I have my email, oh, my phone set up to receive them at emails from two different domains. Okay. It's two, through two different apps. Let's try to see if I I can help you figure it out. So since we're here, though, let me show you how to do the forwarding. So once you click on vanity email, you just come down here and click on options. Under options, you'll see up here message filters. I said forwarding before. It's message filters. Click on filters, and then you just hit new, and you'll type in your where you want it to be forwarded to, and save. And then all of your email will just automatically then Anything that goes to your at Century 21 will go on yeah, that is that. That's what I would do. Yeah, okay. That's I think that's what you should have done. Yeah, that's you'll it. still have to have the app on your phone. Okay. Which app? Uh to the to, 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 to yeah, my with my Android phone, I have to have a Gmail app on. Oh yeah, I do have that. Okay. okay. Yeah, so but just so go to vanity email, uh -huh. click on it, it'll bring you to here, click options, mess message filters. New and put in your Gmail or whatever and save and all of them go there. Okay. Awesome. awesome. Okay, well thanks for being here guys. So um, Thursday is company foundation. I'm gonna be I'm leaving to St. George tonight. I'll be down there Wednesday, Thursday, Friday teaching the class. So Jason Carlson, the guy that was sitting in the back there, he's gonna be the one teaching on Thursday. So give him a hard time. <laughs> Just don't tell him I said that. <laughs> Next week for us, we have the summit, so there's one Tuesday class, is that right? Um, I don't remember it was Tuesday. Actually, Tuesday, correct. There's no class because we got the Mike Ferry event on Wednesday. But then Thursday, we do have buyer packet. So the real reason we don't have it on Tuesday is because it's the company golf tournament, not playing golf. Oh, so that's the one. That's, 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 that's a good reason. Yeah, it is a good reason. So Thursday, we'll do buyer packets. So. Okay, well, have a good one. Thanks for being here. And I guess I'll see you guys most of you next Thursday or Wednesday at Mike Ferry. Make sure you plan for that for sure. Yeah.